Hi, I'm Maimon, and today I'm going to show you how to diagnose whether your wall switch or toggle switch for your light is broken and how to replace it. Alright, so obviously the first thing we have to do is open the wall switch, take a small screwdriver, ours is flathead, and just unscrew it and take off the plate. Pretty self explanatory. And now the wall switch is exposed. So as you can see right here next to the new one, they look pretty similar. I think this one is just a bit bigger than this one. Anyway, first we're going to check if there is actually current running through. So you can either take a multimeter like this, or you can take a specialized tool, uh, which we have right here. Uh, I'm not sure how much this costs. I think it costs around the same as a multimeter, but it only has this one purpose. So first off, let's use this tool. This tool detects current. So we're going to turn it on. And when it detects current, it's going to beep red. So let's see. So right now, since the lights are on, current should be running on the right side and the left side of the switch. So let's try it. So as you can see, because it's beeping red, it's detecting current. Also on this side. Now then, let's try turning off the light and see how that affects the results. Right side. It detects current. Left side. It doesn't detect anything. Alright. So let's try with the multimeter now. I'm not going to demonstrate how to use a multimeter uh, to diagnose this because um, honestly it is a bit risky, uh, especially if you don't know how to use a multimeter correctly. So if you don't know how to use a multimeter, I recommend not using it um, because in person I've actually seen people use this improperly and instead of detecting for current, they actually send power to the switch and sparks fly. So like I said, uh, if you don't know how to use it properly, then don't use a multimeter at all. It's better off just using one of these specialized tools. So here we are in a different room. And right now we're going to test with this other switch. And as you can see, this switch is a bit different. It seems to be an older switch because the two uh, slide screws uh, are actually on the front rather than on the side, like with the new switches. My dad actually said that at Lowe's, he couldn't find any switches that look like this because this is actually more safer. And I'll explain why in a second. But right now, we're gonna test. Uh, the we're gonna test if this sends current both off and on. So right now, the lights are off. So let's detect on the right first. This is a bit dangerous, so we have to keep my fingers away. So on the top right, it detects current. On the bottom left, it doesn't detect current. Let me try it again. Nothing. Okay. Wait, is this off or? Oh wait. <laughs> This is off. Okay. So uh, obviously uh, it was on the on position, uh, but if it was on the off position, it would still not work on the bottom left. So as you can see, the switch is definitely broken. In order to replace the switch, you, know, you have to make sure that the breaker is flipped first. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But right now, let me talk about this old switch right here. If you do have an old switch like this, make sure you replace it with a new switch that has the live screws on the side. Because uh, if you take off the panel for, you know, I don't know, if you want to paint the room, uh, someone could stick their finger inside the box and get electrocuted because of these live screws. They're exposed and you don't want them to get electrocuted. So this is our breaker. Obviously, yours will look a little bit different, but your breaker should definitely have some kind of explanation on it that tells you which breakers go to where. We already know that uh, for our room, the breaker that we're looking for is 15. So we're just going to flip that and then we're going to check for current to make sure that it's actually off. All right, so now let's check again to see if there's current. Okay, this is on the off position. Let's try the on position. Of course, it doesn't matter which position it's going to be in. This doesn't have any current. So now let's try to take it out. All right, uh, maybe one last thing. Maybe let's let's try it with her. <laughs> oh, okay, it's safe. Let's take it out. Oh, it looks like this has actual paint in it. So it's a bit hard to jam the screwdriver in. 
Oh, dang. You can actually see the paint chipping off. <laughs> there we go. So we got a grip on it, and now we're just going to take that off. Like my dad was saying, this is a really old switch. Probably here before we moved in. Actually, all the switches were actually installed before we moved in. And it seems that when we painted over this room, we also painted over the screw. So that seems to... Okay, I got it out, and now we're going to move on to the bottom. Oh, I thought I got it out, but it looks like there's a bit more. Alright, now, so now we have both of the screws taken off, so now we're going to take this out. And you can see that on this side, the wires are attached under these screws. Now, in order to see how this relates to the new screw, to, to the new switch, we have to look at the position of these screws. So, the wire that connects to this top right screw, it looks like it will be connected to this top screw. And the one on this bottom left will be corresponding to this bottom screw. And we know that because... Actually, I don't know how we know that. Uh, but anyway, actually, maybe I should get Azami to do this part. Hmm? Because he's the electrical engineer. Azami! Zami, you should, you should help me with my video. Alright, we got Zami here now. Alright, so the place is actually pretty simple. So you want to um, sort of unscrew this. Okay, so that it hooks off. <laughs> so we unscrew it. Okay, put that screw somewhere. And then, so this hook will release. So that will actually attach the here. So I'll unhook the other side too. So just gotta unscrew it. Right, so now we have both of the screws off and we just take this out now we attach the hooks to these oh top right goes to top and bottom left goes to bottom so. oh i see yeah okay so once you have it hooked on, you want to tighten it so that it stays hooked on. And then hooking the other side is going to be kind of tricky because now it's flipped sides. You might try bending it a little bit so it will be kind of tricky, but it's doable. So you want to in it so it stays in place with a little bit of work in bending we can get in position and then we just screw it in hey that's pretty cool and now we can just screw it in you want it to be um really tight so that it stays on there and so it makes a connection right mm-hmm Oh, that's pretty cool. I wonder how Zombie's not getting zapped right now. <laughs> Alright, uh, thanks my brother Zami yeah. for being the electrical engineer. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could never be the electrical engineer. I don't even know how to use a multimeter. Right, Zami? Mm -hmm. That's your favorite, that's your favorite device? Exactly. Anyway. It's so okay. useful. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're about to screw this in now. Should be fairly easy. Just gotta make sure that it goes in just a bit. Just gonna screw this in a bit so it stays in there. Screw in the bottom. That one should align fairly well. And then while we're screwing this in, I can talk about why we're doing this. Anyway, okay, so now we have both of them in. We have both we have all the wire stuffed behind the housing. <laughs> I'm still watching me. Anyway, uh now all we have to do is screw it in. Let me just I see something back there. Let me just straighten it out. Okay, uh, while I screw this in, let me talk about this switch. This switch was around, very really cheap actually, around 87 cents at Home Depot. 
And the reason that we replaced this was because we were trying to replace our um, ceiling fan. We actually have another video on that. Uh, go check it out. I'll probably link it in the description below. Um, and after that, we tried testing it, and we realized that the light didn't work. So we tried figuring out what the problem was. We tried dis dismantling the ceiling fan, and we figured out that there was nothing off the ceiling fan. Then we went here to look if the switch was actually working, and lo and behold, it wasn't. So, then, my dad realized that instead of that spending that $60 to replace that ceiling fan was, could have been, could, could have been easily replaced by spending 80 cents for a light switch. I mean, in the end, it wasn't too bad because, you know, we got to replace the ceiling fan and the ceiling fan was probably outdated anyway. And we got to replace this old light switch, which was probably going to kill someone. Okay, of course, I just want to make sure that we got it all right. Top is working, bottom isn't because it's off. Let's turn it on. Top is working, bottom is working. That's sweet. It's always the best moment when you f finally fix something. <laughs> now, it's just a matter <laughs> of putting the plate back on. And it shouldn't be too hard, so I'll set that aside for now. And do my closing. So, I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I got videos. Wait. I'm Ayman. I'm Azafi. <laughs> And thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and get videos on I Nyman, including uh, my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. And you'll see more of me and Azami on both of them. Uh, anyway, signing out. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Let's see if it actually works. So as you can see, when I touch it up to the red and blue wire, which is for the lights, it works. That's pretty cool. Now we have to put everything back on. <laughs> so, sucks for us. <laughs> All right, moment of truth. Okay, first, oh, why don't we do them both at the same time? Three, two, one. Hey, that's beautiful. All right.